We're making yogurt today. So I use my Instant Pot for yogurt. And I have already put one cup of water in this and then I put my pressure lid on and I let it, man, I did manual pressure for two minutes. That was just to sanitize my stainless steel container. Poured that water off, took that other lid off. I'm just gonna use the glass and uh, have it off. I'm gonna pour one gallon, and this is actually the smaller version. I guess it's the medium version. I think they have a very small one. It fits one whole gallon in here. I am going to turn it on to our yogurt setting and hit adjust until it is boil. Put it on that and we're gonna let that be. This, I love have using my pressure can, pressure canner, my Instapot for this yogurt and also for buttermilk. I use this to, it's, this is actually essentially pasteurizing our milk. I only do that for yogurt and buttermilk because that is a very specific strain that I want to grow in it and we'll add that culture in a few minutes. Uh, we'll let this boil and I will bring you back. It will start to beep and it will tell me yogurt when this has reached the temperature. Um, and then we will cool that temperature down to 112 in the sink. I run cold water um, in the sink, set this in it, and then I kind of whisk uh, uh, the milk and just um, watch the temperature till it gets down to 112 and then I add my culture which will be yogurt from the last batch for a gallon. I'll probably use half a cup of our old yogurt from last time we made it and then we will mix that together and then we'll put it back in our Instapot container um, overnight. We'll actually put the yogurt setting on this but I'll, I'll show you more. Okay my Instapot beeped and told me that it, it, it flashed yogurt. This has already been up to temperature. I ran cold water into my sink. I'm going to get my pot of, of its hot milk, pasteurized milk now. I'm going to set it down in my sink and I'm going to use a thermometer. This is my cheese thermometer. I'm going to set it in there. I have not check the temperature yet to see what we're at. And I whisk this, um, this milk around a little bit. This just helps to bring that temperature down. Okay, I'm at the 150. Um, you can run ice water or you can put ice in the water that is around. You do not want to get any water in your milk, right? Nobody wants any watered down milk or yogurt. But you can run ice, cold water in the sink around it. It really cools down pretty quickly when you're doing it this way. When you're whisking it, you're bringing on around the sides the water that is cooled from the, the milk that is cooled from the cold water on the side. You're mixing in and getting hot water back up, so it really helps if you take the time. I'm not like making a big foamy mess, but I'm already bringing it down. It is 140. this really cuts the wait time down. I mean, you can set this and just wait for it to come down. But if I did that, I would end up forgetting about it and wasting a gallon of milk. And like I said, you can throw ice in the water to cool it even faster. We are down to 125. We're trying to get this temperature down to 112. At 112, we are going to add our culture. So this could be yogurt, so we're going to add yogurt culture. We actually just use a half a cup from our previous gallon of, of yogurt. <clears throat> this is my yogurt container that I'm gonna put it in. This is a half gallon. I made a whole gallon of milk into yogurt, but I'm actually gonna strain this out and make it into a Greek yogurt. And a Greek yogurt is going to just be without as much whey, so it'll be a lot thicker. It ends up being that I strain off enough from that, from whey from the yogurt that it fits perfectly in a half gallon container. And I also, if you're a cheese maker, you can use your yogurt whey that you pull off when you make a, a uh, Greek yogurt <clears throat> to make cheeses. Cheeses that are 
thermophilic. We use two different types of culture when we're making cheese. It's either going to be a mesophilic or a thermophilic uh, culture normally. These are the normal things that we do. So a thermophilic culture would make things that heat up to a higher temperature. Thermo, that's where that is from. So um, I use the mesophilic culture for cheddars and Colby's and Havarti's and uh, Gouda. But if I am making Asiago or a Parmesan, I can use my yogurt whey as a thermophilic culture. Just to put that out there. That might not pertain to very many of you. I'm down to 120. Sorry, I got distracted talking about cheese things. Uh, oh yeah. Okay, down to 110. Perfect timing. I'm going to drain this water because I don't really want it to get any cooler. And I've got a container from my last batch of yogurt. Half a cup. Put that down in there. to make your own yogurt. I think that's one of the best ways to start making homemade dairy is to do your yogurt, especially if you have one of these uh, Instapots. It makes it so easy. You will do the exact same thing that I'm doing if you are using store-bought milk. And if you only do half a gallon, you don't need to have half a cup. You can use a quarter cup from your lab, from cheese, uh, from yogurt. Um, you can also use store-bought yogurt. Just make sure it is not a vanilla, uh, sweetened or anything. You want a unsweetened Greek yogurt with the live cultures in there. That's why we make homemade yogurt. I made this way before I ever had a cow because it was hard for me to find any yogurt in the store that I liked the ingredients in. And I didn't pay that much money for it. Okay, so that is mixed in. I whisked it together. And uh, I have a little bit up here, so I'm going to go ahead and wipe that. Next, we are going to let this sit. I'm going to hit the yogurt, and I'm going to hit adjust. And I let it set for, I put this on for 24 hours. This is going to keep it at the temperature that it needs to incubate, which is awesome. I put it on for 24 hours. I will take it off tomorrow morning, and I uh, start straining it, and I will show you that. You can do this without an Instapot, but I have done it, and um, I have scalded my milk, not meaning to, I've burnt the bottom, and wasted uh, several gallons of milk before I had a milk cow. But this works absolutely the best. Uh, you can also, um, if you happen to do it on your own without an Instapot, you can incubate it in a dehydrator. I have done that too. Um, I have a awesome Excalibur dehydrator that my husband's grandmother gave to us and we use that all the time and we love it and it is great for incubating yogurt but this is just so easy. You can also stick it in the oven with the light on. Um, I've never done that because I'm a little bit forgetful <laughs> and I'll end up cooking or baking my yogurt. I'm, I'm sure of it. Um, another thing I've seen people do is to make this in their crock pot and then they let it, uh, they turn that crock pot off and just wrap towels around it to incubate it. So many different creative ways to make yogurt. I will bring you back when we are about to strain it tomorrow night. Our yogurt is done. You want to come look at it. It is a full fat yogurt. I did not strain all the cream off so you can actually see the cream sitting on the top that is going to be delicious it smells so sweet right now so i'm going to turn off my instapot and i'm actually going to strain this out because i want this to be a greek yogurt i don't want it to be very runny it's it's really not runny let me see if i can show you it's not very runny but it, it'll be even thicker if i strain it out so i have a cheesecloth and i have a bowl i'm actually i I am boiling water on the kettle and I'm going to sanitize this by 
pour in boiling water on it. Just a little bit because I do like, I make cheese, I make lots of things with my cheesecloths and I do not want to mix the, the cultures that I have. So that should be good. I'm going to strain that little bit of water that was in my bowl now off and I'm going to dump this thing of, ah, make a big mess. See, if I try to do this in a pot, I always scald the bottom and waste some of the milk and then it doesn't taste very well and then I end up throwing it out. But this, no big deal at all. So I'm gonna tie up the sides. I usually do cut a corner to each other. Oh, it smells so sweet. And then the other two sides. And then I have a hook in the, on the side of my kitchen that I hang things like this. And I'm going to leave this bowl under it. Obviously, I don't really want to have a bunch of whey. This is yogurt whey all over my counter. I'm going to let this strain out for probably about three, four hours, depending on how thick you want it. If you get it so thick that it's just too too thick for you. You can always make some of this yogurt way back in to make it the right consistency for your family. It's been a, several hours. I'm going to go ahead and save back some of this way because this is going to be a big mess. Well, now I have a big mess to clean up, but I'm going to put this down here. So it's good and thick now. I'm very happy with it. I'm going to sweeten this with some honey from our bees. And I'm also going to put some homemade vanilla in this. So it'll be a vanilla yogurt. I will save back half a cup of this and go ahead and put it in the fridge without any flavoring or sweetener so that I can start another batch of yogurt with this. So thank you so much for coming along and making yogurt with me. This is something I really think you should do from store-bought milk because it can save you so much money. Um, home dairy without a cow in some instances is not economical, you know what I mean. But this is one way you can save a lot of money. So we make homemade granola. We, I say we all the time. I don't mean we, I mean I. We have homemade granola. I usually try to keep this all the way full, fresh granola. And uh, we eat this granola like cereal, but we also have our raw milk. It's just not raw now because it has been pasteurized, but our yogurt to eat with our granola. So make some things from scratch. Make your kitchen handmade and from scratch. Um, your family will appreciate all the time you spend on it. And I think you will benefit in so many ways from your health to just your um, your peace about the food that you're getting. Have a great day. God bless you. And subscribe if you enjoy this kind of content. Bye. I wanted to show you another thing we do a lot with homemade granola. It, uh, homemade yogurt. We will take berries. These are like blackberries or blueberries from our bushes outside. And make a simple syrup. And then we will put that on top of our homemade yogurt. That is one way we use up a lot of our fruit too.